All right, all right, guys, welcome back. And in today's episode, we are going to be looking at getting the active user based on the authorization token. So for that, we are going to create a new endpoint for active user. So let's get started with that. So if you come back to our code, come back to auth, we need to get active user. But in the case of the active user, it's going to be making use of an authenticated middleware. So that way we can get information for the active user. So the first thing I think we should do in that case is to define the middleware itself. So here I'm going to create a new file called middlewares. In case we have more, but for now it's just going to be one. And yeah, first thing first, we have to package uh, this up, this package utils. And the middleware we want to have here is the authenticated middleware. So authenticated. Yeah, I can call it authenticated, but obviously let's make it out the middleware uh, surface so that it's obvious. So yeah, this is where to take in the token controller. So that way we can access the validate token function. So here we have the DWT star DWT. And this is going to be used within the gene context. So this is going to return the gene dot under form. Okay. So we're going to return a function and yeah, we have a structure pulled up by copilot. Let's see if it's what we want. So the first thing is the token string. We want to get is from the authorization. Yeah, from the header. So if token string is empty, we want to return a 401 error. So instead of that, I'm going to use the status. So HTTP dot status unauthorized yeah that's better so unauthorized and we abort then we return that is good and because this token is going to contain the bearer information we want to split it so here we can have token splits i, I don't think um copilot considered that although you could tell it to define what you want so token splits and I'm going to split with this. So that means the only value I'm going to have at the end of the day is just going to be the only token. So we can split this by just the space. Let's ignore the bearer part. Let's ignore copilots uh, overdue. Yeah, so we have strings. So the part we need for our token, or rather the expectation for the token split should be two. So we can share. So if length of token split is not two, then there is an issue with the token. We can return unauthorized and abort a return. So we can do all this, or better still, we can join it together instead of having multiple shapes. So here we can say all strings dot to lower. So we have to convert what we have in the first section to lower case and see if it's a bearer. Because the expectation here is this should be a bearer of token. So if any of these cases is the issue, then your token is bad. So we are returning out. So then we want to verify or rather validate the token, which is what we did here. So we are expecting the user email from it or an error. So in the process of validating, if there is an issue, then obviously your token is bad as well. And finally, we can set the active email as email, or rather, let's use user email. And we do that. So that's looking good. So now the next question is how do we specify this middleware? And it's quite straightforward. So middlewares are specified within our routes. We've done this before. So for the case of our auth, we are coming back to the auth. So this middleware is not going to be available within all group. So at that point, we'll have just said auth me do it here and it'll be good. But that's not what we want. We want to have it on a specific path. So here we can have server group dot gets. And yeah, this is going to be me, which means the active user. And this is going to be our middleware, utils.authenticated middleware, and we can send in the JWT we have from the server. And here we want to active user like that. So we need to define that function, we'll come down. So for active user, and this should be quite straightforward. So cts.get user email. So this is getting the user email from the contest. And we want to get the user associated with this email. 
So here we can have the obtained user or let's just call it user in this case or error. So a.server.db.get user. I don't know why it's making a claim. Probably the email itself is not a string. So as you can see, it's an any value. So yeah, we convert into string, or if we want it to be string explicitly, we can come back here and make this a string. So we have string like this, and we convert it to a string. So now with this done, this is going to be a string. It shouldn't be any, it should be a string. Let's see. Yep, it does it here, and it sees it as any anyways, probably because it's in the contest. But I don't think this should matter in the ways as well. Okay, it does matter oh, as we had. So we could do this or we could convert this to string anywhere. Whoops. Yep, so here we can check if error is not new, then yep, we are forbidden for some reason. Yeah, we trace the token you have with you is bad. Yeah, we are forbidden, obviously. Then we can return the user. Or better still, we can return message user actually we can use the a the server dot to user here and if that's what we are doing we don't need the gene ish we can just return the user directly yep so that works so this is us implementing um the routes to get active user so if our server is working which it is let's come back to tests so for this we need a new environmental information so we need the token. So let's get it. We come back to environment. And so we save this. So now we can come back here, create a new route. So add requests, active user. So we are going to have the hosts out into me. And if we try to send a request now, we would get you are not authorized, which means you need to provide the authorization token. So here we have the PR token and we specify the token. So if we do this now, we should get our results still not authorized. Even though we specify that token. Yeah, that's weird. We shouldn't get that. All right, so let's kind of um, debug what the error is. So we can come back to our code on the middle where, so instead of returning gene error, let's actually have the error. So let's just call it token splits. So we know where the issue is coming from. So error dot error. And yeah, this is to get the error which we fixed. So if our server is running, which it is, let's see if we get more information about the error. So invalid token. So where did we? Yep, validate token. Yep, so the error came from here. That's weird. Okay, let's try to log in again and see if we missed anything. And let's see how it does. Yeah, we have the authorization token, which looks good. But well, this is invalid token this time around. So let's try to log in again. we will trace out what we've done wrong. So we copy, change token. It's still the same token though. Then active user get yep. So let me take a look at what's doing up here. Alright, so after digging further, I figure out the error. So token strength should not contain bearer. So I guess we've had an oversight somewhere. So I returned this error directly and that gave me that insight. So I can return this back. Yeah, just to have consistency. Then I think we didn't have middle where we set in the token string directly. Actually, we should have sent the token splits. And this should be one. Okay, so I think that was the issue. And hopefully, 
now we are correct so let's test it again yep now we have the user info email test test so if we test with a different token so let's edit this token and move the last panel and send so obviously invalid token it means our patient is working so there you have it guys now we can get active user which means we can now proceed to our finsa related operations the authentication has been relatively old flow it's just something we've done before the next few parts are what really uh, are peculiar to finsa and in the next episode uh, we are going to start looking at how we can process the car service by creating the services api see you in the next episode and bye for now